Tonight, Senator Kirsten Sinema is insisting her decision to switch from Democrat to Independent won't, won't change how she does her job. Let's get some more on Senator Sinema's exclusive interview right now with CNN and what her new status means for the state of play here in Washington. CNN congressional correspondent Jessica Dean is joining us live from Capitol Hill. Jessica, a huge curveball from Senator Sinema today. It certainly was, Wolf, and this has been a big week for Senate Democrats, of course, getting that 51 seat majority on Tuesday, uh, really celebrating uh, Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer so excited to have that majority. And then today, this huge news. Friday brought a bombshell for Senate Democrats. I've registered as an Arizona independent. Arizona Senator Kirsten Sinema, a moderate who wielded enormous power in the evenly split Senate of the last two years, telling CNN's Jake Tapper she has left the Democratic Party and is now an independent. I just not worried about folks who may not like this approach. What I am worried about is continuing to do what's right for my state. Following her announcement, Cinema talked with reporters at an Arizona food bank on Friday, saying she's not focused on re-election, but on her constituents. Her term is up in 2024. Today's announcement is a reflection of my values, and I think the values of most Arizonans who are tired of a political system that pulls people to the edges and really doesn't reflect who we are as a people. Cinema gave the White House and Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer advance warning of her announcement. On Friday, Schumer said in a statement, Cinema will keep her committee assignments, adding, quote, I believe she's a good and effective senator and am looking forward to a productive session in the new Democratic Majority Senate. We will maintain our new majority on committees, exercise our subpoena power, and be able to clear nominees without discharge votes. Fellow Senate Democrats and the White House echoing that sentiment, saying Sinema's decision won't change much. If she were to say, no, I'm going over Republican, I am not voting with them anymore, that's a whole different thing. That is nowhere near what she said. And she has tended not to go to the caucus meeting, something she said, so I'm not, like, telling something out of school, um, except for rare moments where she's advocating for something she cares about. And that's not going to change either. Practically, Democrats will maintain their Senate majority with three independents now. Plenty of Democrats have sharply criticized the move, though. Arizona Representative Ruben Gallego, a potential challenger to cinema, should she run again in 2024, blasted the move in a statement saying, quote, unfortunately, Senator Cinema is once again putting her own interests ahead of getting things done for Arizonans. And again, when it comes to the day-to-day -day operations of the Senate moving forward in this next session, it's worth underscoring she's keeping those committee assignments. That means the Democrats are going to hold majorities in these committees and still be able to exercise a lot of that power wolf that they were excited to get with that 51-seat majority. The big questions that are going to begin to bubble up and crop up is what happens in 2024 when she's up for re-election? If she chooses to run again, will Democrats field a candidate against her? Uh, what does that look like? That's what we're going to keep our eye on in the next several months, Wolf. All right, good point. Jessica, stay with us. I also want to bring in CNN's chief White House correspondent, Phil Mattingly, and CNN political commentator, Michael Smirkanish. He's the host of CNN Smirkanish. Phil, uh, the White House is downplaying this decision from cinema, but behind the scenes, did this take some of the wind out of their sails uh, after they just celebrated big time the Democrats' two-seat margin, the majority they have in the Senate? Yeah, well, there's no question it's been a whipsaw of a week based on what happened Tuesday versus what happened today. But one official I spoke to just a short while ago probably captured it best when he said it could have been worse. And I think that's kind of how White House officials viewed it. There's no question this was a surprise. There's no question this isn't something that they wanted to hear. And they did hear it directly from Sinema's team. Uh, they were informed before the decision was announced. However, as just laid out so well, she is staying on committees at her request. Uh, Senator Chuck Schumer saying that would work. She has voted with the president 93% of the time over the class, last two years. And there is a very strong view inside the White House that particularly on the issues that they feel like they can make a lot of progress on in the next two years with that expanded majority, most notably on nominations, she has proven that she will be there when they need her. They don't see any change to that at this point in time. However, I do think there's an undercurrent here uh, that will become more apparent in the weeks ahead, and that's kind of the symbolism of a critical moderate in the Democratic caucus deciding to leave that caucus. What that means for the administration, what that means for Democrats uh, heading into a presidential cycle is something that they need to grapple with. Wolf. Yeah, good point. You know, Michael, 
Uh, Senator Sinema says she doesn't fit neatly into either political party's box. Is that something voters out there relate to? Amen. I mean, there are so many who feel just as she feels. You know, Wolf, I've heard, read, watched a lot of cynicism today from folks who say, ah, it's only about survival. It's a technique for her to evade a primary in two years and then secure re-election. My glass is half full. I look at it differently. I think that Senator Sinema chooses to be one among the 35% of us who, according to Gallup, and that number's been higher, but a plurality of Americans who say, I'm not served by the R's or the D's, I'm an I. And the number is about the same in Arizona. To the extent it is a survival technique, well, it says something very sad about closed primaries and primaries in general. Look at Jeff Flake, now look at Kirsten Cinema. The idea that there's no room for nuance and you've gotta be far to the left or far to the right and you can't get nominated. But that's not where most of the country is. Most of the country is somewhere between those polar extremes. So to the extent she wants to give voice to those of us who are closer to the middle, I'm all for it. Good point. You know, Jessica, let's turn to the House of Representatives where Kevin McCarthy's quest to become the next Speaker of the House is becoming increasingly tense right now, as you well know. What sort of concessions is McCarthy considering in order to secure the 218 votes he needs to become the Speaker? Well, we know, Wolf, that he is meeting very privately and seriously with a lot of these conservatives who he needs to sway and make sure that he has on his side uh, when this comes to a floor vote in January. When he tries to get to 218 votes, he can only, um, he, 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 needs, he needs to get there. He only has four to spare, so it's not a lot. And he's had five come out say that they will not vote, uh, they will not vote for him. There's one that says he's a little bit gettable, so maybe there's some wiggle room there. Uh, so he does have a lot of work to do to get to that number, and to that end, we know a couple things. Number one, uh, he has been talking to this group of conservatives uh, about committee assignments on kind of high profile committees, uh, committees like the Rules Committee, which sets the rule for how different legislation will come to the floor. That's pretty powerful. The other thing, they want to be able to drive the legislative process more. So it's about trying to negotiate with them and get them on board. The question is, Wolf, can he do that? Is there anything that's enough to get them on his side by January 3rd? That's a good point. You know, Michael, if the House GOP can't even get on the same page about their leadership. What might this mean for their ability to get things done in the new Congress? There's no doubt that they're trying to herd cats. I mean, it's, it's a mathematical equation, right? He can afford to lose four, and thus far it looks like he's gonna lose five. If that's the situation, then he's, he's either gotta make a deal with the conservative members of the caucus or reach across the aisle and see if there's some room, some wiggle room for negotiation with the D's. But in terms of what can be accomplished, let's not forget that Democrats still maintain control of the Senate and the White House. So there's nothing legislatively that I think is going to come out of the Republican Party. I do believe they'll seek to make life miserable for all things Biden. Yeah, you're probably right. Uh, Michael Smirkanish, Jessica Dean, Phil Mattingly, guys, thank you very, very much.